I'm talking to Scott Bain, who is the director of sales for Range Networks. Range produce a set of low energy, low cost, open BTS base stations. What is open BTS, Scott? So, um, open BTS, Russell, is, is uh, um, essentially simplified GSM and voice over IP. So, um, one side is fully compliant GSM. Uh, 2G at this stage, and the other side is Linux, uh, OpenBTS, OpenBTS, and um, an asterisk soft switch. Mm. So uh, essentially, one side is GSM, one side are SIP trunks and SIP endpoints. Essentially, what are the advantages of BTS over what's gone before? Well, um, it, it's simplified GSM in terms of yeah. there's no complex um, SS7 or uh, proprietary GSM data centers required. It's it's largely based on internet protocols such as SIP uh, and HTTPS. So it, it, it essentially moves intelligence to the edge uh, of the network uh, and the core network um, effectively becomes very much like a 4G LTE core network, just on a commodity IP backbone uh, and the open BTS cell sites compare directly with one, and the, one another. And where did Open B briefly? Where did Open BTS come from? So the founders of uh, of Range Networks and the and the original code writers, if you like, of Open BTS were David Burgess and Harvin Semra, based out of California, uh, and they had an idea in 2006 to uh, develop uh, um, a system that essentially could go into countries where the output was extremely low. You know, we're talking two to three dollars a month. Um, They've been writing GSM code for something like 13 years and written a lot of uh, defence code, mm. um, and started with the business case, and then after that moved moved to the technical uh, product, if you like. Initially, starting Open BTS as a public uh, version uh, mm. to see whether it gained momentum, uh, which it, which it did. It was very successful, and probably about two years ago, introducing a commercial variant of that which is um, a, a different fork in the code. It's the uh, commercial version of OpenBTS, which has carrier grade features uh, integrated with Range Networks hardware. So what are the products that Range is offering on a commercial basis? Uh, so at the moment, there are four products. There is uh, a, a 100 milliwatt lab, lab version. Uh, there's a one watt industrial version. There's uh, the, the, Two of our long-range version. There's a 10 watt single Afkin, or if, um, if you like, uh, single TRX version, and a 50 watt multi Afkin version uh, with far more concurrent calls. So, who would this product be relevant for in the African context? Um, uh, uh, many of the tier three carriers are, uh, are, are purchasing OpenBTS at the moment and rolling it out. So, in what sort of places? Uh, Ghana, uh, Kenya. Uh, Tanzania, where our two largest markets at the mm. moment would be Africa, South America, um, uh, around the Pacific Islands, Australia, Antarctica. There's something like uh, uh, 250 commercial deployments out there at the moment. Probably half of our customer base um, at the moment is government and military, and the other half would be rural GSM. Um, but it's all over the place, you know. There's, mm. uh, uh, there's all sorts of customers and um, in all sorts of sectors. Yeah, so it's tier three carriers and small ISPs. Yes, and it's it's actually the small ISPs um, at the moment that I'm personally dealing with. They are uh, they might be a um, small ISP that already have a voice over IP service. They might have five to fifteen thousand subscribers. They are aware of a number of rural communities that do not have. Uh, any kind of GSM coverage, and um, they see OpenBTS as an extremely easy way to extend the service they're already offering um, um, in their towns out, uh, out to, to rural villages. So typically, the biggest challenge they have, um, as any GSM operator has, is, is, is obtaining frequency. They typically know someone on a mobile operator, or in the government, or both, mm. and, and we've seen some very interesting relationships develop whereby the mobile operators are uh, leasing, loaning, giving some of the frequency to these um, smaller ISPs to provide coverage in a you know very small rural village.
Yeah, in areas that are beyond their sort of addressable business case. Absolutely, where the, yeah. where the return on investment simply does not make sense for mm. traditional GSM um, hierarchies and architecture. Yeah. And what's the cost of these base stations? So the, uh, the cost of a fully fledged um, um, autonomous open BTS base station is any, anywhere from 7,000 to 20,000 and that's pretty much all you need. Uh, that, that has its own subscriber registry, uh, the radio side, the, uh, the soft switch side mm. and uh, you know there's no data center required, there's, uh, there's no trunking back to a central site. Mm. Uh, required. So, one of the one of the most attractive features that um, a lot of people find about OpenBTS is the fact that local calls remain completely local. Um, even the signalling um, is local, and uh, that pretty much means the only calls that have to go up the satellite path uh, are the ones that need to talk to the PS10 or um, externally out of the rural village. Mm. So that. That's quite an attractive feature um, for many of the rural villages. And what's the power requirement? Uh, so the uh, it's, it's extremely low. Our 10 watt um, RF output um, single life can open BTS unit um, only requires 60 watts at 12 volts. So if you can run a light bulb, mm. you can run an open BTS unit. Um, the multi arf can 50 watt units around uh, 220 watts. So you know even that is. Uh, extremely low power consumption and that's you know um, a lot of people run our systems off solar and battery power and wind power so mm. yet another attractive feature. Scott thanks for talking to me today. Thank you Russell.